we have been uh, members of the church our whole life yeah. and we uh, grew up listening about uh, the stories uh, of the pioneers mm -hmm. and the people that developed this beautiful city Nabu. it's just very emotional for us it, it turns to be truth something that we just heard like simple stories but we are here <laughs> so this historic exodus began on February 4th, 1846, as they loaded team and wagon on a flatboat across the river. From February 4th to March 1st, there were nearly 400 wagons that crossed the river. Today we're commemorating those courageous saints and the sacrifices that were leaving a home that they loved for a God that they loved even more. Today we walk this trail with those early saints in mind and even with the names of some of them pinned to our clothing, I'd like to conclude my words with the words of Joseph when he said, Shall we not go on in so great a cause? Go forward, not backward. Courage, brethren, and on to the victory. I was asked to be uh, the color guard with one of my friends to lead the patrons and everybody down to the end of the river. I am walking on behalf of Daniel Hammer Wells, he was a commander general for the Nauvoo Legion. He was 34 years old. Today we commemorate the day the first of them left. They left to head to a new home. We often say that these saints were forced from their homes due to mob violence and government pressure. And that is true. But as I've pondered, I have known that if the Lord's plan had been to build his kingdom here, at this place, in that time, they would have stayed. They would have stayed despite the local mobs, despite the state militia, the governor of Illinois, despite their harassment, the calumny, even despite the burning of homes. They knew the Lord was with them and they trusted him. So if he had asked them to stay, they would have stayed but it was the Lord's plan to have them leave. It was his plan to take them to the place he had prepared for his kingdom to flourish and grow to fill the earth. It was the Lord who knew that Nauvoo or Missouri were not the right place at that time. He knew the purposes for gathering here in Nauvoo had been fulfilled. The Lord brought the people he needed to have here to this place. They were hardworking people, people who drained a swamp, built a city. Talented and skilled people were drawn here, people who knew how to design buildings, carve stone, shape tin. They were faith-filled people who would leave behind family to answer the Lord's call. The Lord knew the purpose of this place and he made happen here what needed to happen here. In less than seven years, it went from a swamp to a beautiful city. If he had wanted it to continue to flourish, wanted it to remain, he would have made that happen. Instead, he had these people put their all into building a sacred, holy house of God where he could pour out his blessings upon them Blessings he knew they would need for what he knew the future would bring to them. They had come to this place, this swamp, to build a people and to build a temple. This amazing place where riverboat traffic made it possible for them to receive metal from foundries, timber from Wisconsin, and a place where the limestone was in the ground that they needed to build the house of the Lord. And they had to start from nothing so the Lord could show them what they could accomplish with his help. These are the people we honor today. People who heard the voice of the Lord and answered his call. People who were willing to give their all. And then they were asked to do it again. The Lord told them it was time to start over again. He whispered to Joseph, it will be in the West. He inspired Joseph to form the Council of Fifty in 1844. He placed pictures in the mind of Brigham Young of mountains and a valley, and pictures of interchangeable wagon parts, revelation that was needed. 
He brought talented blacksmiths here and wheelwrights and wainwrights, barrel makers, all the people that would be needed to prepare people to cross a vast plain. While he was gathering those who could build a temple, he was also gathering those who could move a people 1,400 miles west. He asked a people to build a temple and build a city and prepare to leave that city and temple all at the same time. What kind of people would do that? I can't imagine anyone doing that without inspiration from God, knowing they could, he could, they could trust him. That is the most important legacy these special consecrated pioneers have blessed us with, the legacy of seeking God's will and following it. They would not want us to gather here to honor them, to remember what they did. They want us to gather here to remember what God did for them, what they were able to accomplish with his help. I know I will never forget what God did here in Nauvoo. On that bluff behind us, that magnificent temple, on the flouts around us, where the people lived and loved each other, here at the river's edge, where they prepared for what was next. I will never forget what he made possible for my dear friends to accomplish during their time in Nauvoo.